fine so let us start with the concept of object identification now that is how do you identify the various elements which are present on the web page okay look as i told you in the, in the last class every page has a page source fine if i if, if i move to the website hold on if i move to say this website in dot redif.com okay and if i right click on the site and you page uh, and you view the page source you'll have the page source like this in the page source i told you that there are tags and attributes okay for example there is this, this tag known as div tag and uh, id is the attribute of this div tag every tag can have one or, or can have zero or many attributes okay whatever starts with the conical bracket this maroonish color is known as a tag name this is an i tag the class is ht5 okay so in selenium we identify the objects with the help of tags and attributes okay right so what we'll do is that hold on we'll make an excel file just a minute guys we will okay and i'll call it html fine this will help you out okay over here i'll write like this object or element html element okay tag name mandatory attribute and optional attribute okay right so look every element has set of mandatory and optional attributes on the web page okay right like what are the various elements on a web page okay what are the various html elements for example there is an input box then there is a button a radio button checkbox Uh, links right normal text is present on the web page okay then there is a drop down okay or a select box fine anything else uh, which we see on a page um no i don't think so there are few hidden components and all i'll not talk about them like tables and all but these are the stuff these are the components which are visible to the human eye so each of these components have a particular tag name okay so if you look at this redif.com this is a text field fine so you can find out the tag name of this text field you have to investigate this page right now there are tools which are available okay these tools help you uh analyze the page source in a much more efficient manner okay for example i want to find out what is the corresponding html code in the page source for this text field then going into the page source and finding it like this it's a it's a tough thing okay so there are tools available for that fine uh just you just need to install firebug in firefox that will help you okay let's talk about firefox first okay uh just go to google and type uh firefox firebug okay 
and you click on the first link over here okay go to the first link out here and click on the button add to firefox fine so firebug will be added as an add-on inside firefox you can click on install and you will see that firebug has been installed successfully you will have this icon coming up on the top right side this is the firebug icon if you click on it firebug will come up right wait a minute let me increase the font size okay right so if you look at firebug fine now in firebug you will find this arrow fine you click on this arrow and move the mouse anywhere on the web page you will get the when you click on the element okay if you go to the html tab okay out of all the tabs over here open the html tab okay and when you move your mouse over the elements you will see the html code of that particular element okay right so this is what firebug does it helps you to analyze the html page source now for example we are talking about text field this is the text field okay the tag name for a text field is always input for any text field the tag name will be input always right okay and along with this uh, tag name you have got various attributes associated fine now some of them att attributes are optional some of them are mandatory mandatory means they will always be present for example an attribute like type equals to text this will always be present with the input field okay so this will mandatory attribute is there type is equal to text an input tag with type equals to text will make a text field a button on a web page okay for example this green arrow out here in front of the text field you have this green arrow this is actually a button okay and button can have a tag name named as button or sometimes it's also having the tag name input as well but there is a mandatory attribute type equals to submit which will always be there in case of a button whether the tag name is input or the tag name is button so you see that over here just a minute yeah type equals to submit is written out here right okay fine now in case of a radio button the tag name is input i know from my experience okay but the mandatory attribute type becomes equals to radio okay a checkbox a checkbox uh, also has the tag name input but type is equals to checkbox okay a link if you analyze any link on this web page say the register link on the top link will always have the anchor tag a
okay always the link will have the anchor tag a href href attribute it actually um, you can say holds the URL which will open up when you click on the link okay so href is the mandatory attribute which holds the URL which will open when you click on the link okay so a link will have a tag name href the mandatory attribute which will always be present right will be href normal text on the page normal text like for example text like this okay or a text like this right look normal text can have any tag like division para okay sometimes it comes in li right so you don't have any specific tag name right you cannot define the tag of normal text it can be inside any tag and there is no mandatory attribute okay for a drop down right in case of a select box do we have it no hold on if I go to ebay.com yeah we have a select drop down out here okay so if I analyze this page source the select drop down the select drop down always have the, has the tag name select okay a drop down always has the tag name select there are set of mandatory attributes no there are no mandatory attributes for a drop down okay only the tag name is select right and there is another component on a web page like image images are there on the web pages right okay so for example this ebay logo right this ebay logo on the top if you analyze it properly yeah this is the ebay logo okay it's not coming yeah it's an image it's an image right and you will always have the tag name img for an image and there will be an attribute known as source which will point towards the URL from which the image is getting loaded okay right so source points towards the URL see this is the URL from this URL this image is getting loaded fine so with image you will always have a source mandatory attribute which will point towards the URL which is from which the image is loading so these are the various components these are the tag names and these are the mandatory attributes with those components fine apart from this there are some optional attributes like ID name class okay right these optional attributes these might or might not be present with the element okay you cannot predict them that whether they will be present or not but if they are present sorry guys yeah, but if they are present if ID name or class is present okay then you know it becomes easy to identify the elements right it becomes easy to work with elements it becomes easy to identify the elements all right fine so how do we move forward and identify the elements with these particular uh, in this particular scenario okay right L let's look at that but before that let's talk about how to identify the elements on other browsers 
okay right just hold on because i just talked about firebug which gets installed as an add on on firefox all right so how do you analyze the page source on other browsers okay uh, when i say other browser like chrome or i right so if i open a browser fine just a minute in hold on right in chrome right you don't have to install anything it's inbuilt there is something known as a chrome inspector right it is inbuilt inside chrome you just need to right click on the element for example this is the google search button i right click on the element and i select the option inspect element so i will get the page source see this is a input type whose type is submit okay i'll get the page source of that element okay this is this window is chrome inspector there is a arrow out here you can move that arrow over the element as well to get the source code of that element okay it is inbuilt inside chrome all right fine so if you talk about i right i'll talk about i i'll open i and one more thing guys for chrome inspector the shortcut is uh, f12 okay if you hit f12 of your keyboard chrome inspector will open up and if you hit f12 again it will close right f12 right now in case of i right if you hit f12 in i you get this i inspector it's it's a developer tool it's one of the developer tools in i if you click on the mouse out here this arrow icon out here and move your mouse over any any element and click on it you will get the page source highlighted okay right it's it's quite simple fine but it's not as simple as firefox all right but you know what what i prefer i prefer to analyze the page source in firefox and use it in the other browsers R remember the page source will remain the same across the browsers page source is the response from the server there is no website or there are hardly there is hardly any website which opens up differently in different browser okay right so the page source page source is always the same it will remain the same for all the browsers for a particular website okay you can analyze or analyze it on firefox and make it work on chrome as well all right fine so now if i look at this fine these are the elements and the tag names mandatory and optional attributes which we have prepared okay now how do i add, identify the elements with them all right let me make a new project known as day 4 i'll add the selenium jar files right now let us take a very simple example okay that we have to go to google dot, sorry gmail.com and you you have to just uh, try to log in inside gmail or something right Le let's take a very very simple example wherein i need to go to gmail.com and probably i need to enter the username fine okay so i'll write the simple code over here i'll make a new class known as gmail 
fine with the hold on with the main function web driver driver equals to new firefox driver okay right and just a minute driver dot get go to the url http gmail dot com right now if you look at the documentation of selenium right if i go to the website selenium hq dot org fine if i go to the download section and if i go to the java docs in downloads i will get the documentation now it's not necessary to go to the documentation again and again by going to the website of uh, selenium hq uh you can actually import the documentation inside eclipse okay you can right click on java doc and you will have the option copy link location fine copy the link location for java doc right what i'm going to do is that i'm going to import the documentation of selenium inside eclipse right so copy the link or click on java doc and let the other page open this is these are documentation so copy this url fine go to eclipse right click on the project go to the properties under java build path you will have all the jars which you have added the main jar which is there which i had talked about was this one selenium java 2.x dot jar okay right expand it you will have the java doc location over here it's none edit it paste the url which you had copied and remove index.html from the end please remove this index.html from the end right if you click on validate it will validate location is likely valid that means it's fine right package links and list and index.html have been found okay and you click on okay okay that's it now suppose if i move my mouse over firefox driver i will start getting the description of firefox driver or web driver right i'll i'll start getting the description of web driver right so if i write driver dot you have got lot of functions which come up if i click on any function i will get the description of that function okay right so in this you have got many links in the description or something if i click on any of the links the documentation will open up inside eclipse okay you can switch to the frames view okay you can click on the frames view and the documentation will open in eclipse all right fine now coming over to the point that after going to gmail how do i say enter my username in the in input field look there is an interface known as web element this web element interface represents an an html element okay this basically means that it represents a generic component on a page a button in selenium don't don't confuse this with web element of qtp if you know qtp okay in selenium web element denotes any component on the page it can be the text it can be a button it can be an image anything okay all these things are known as web elements all these elements which i have written under column a in selenium all of them are known as web elements 
ओके राइट एंड एंड इन योर इन वेब ड्राइवर इंटरफेस देर इज अ फंक्शन नोन एज फाइंड एलिमेंट इट फाइंड द पर्टिकुलर वेब एलिमेंट ऑन द पेज बाय एनी क्राइटेरिया ओके होल्ड ऑन आई एल राइट ओवर हेयर इन साइड एक्लिप्स आई एल राइट ड्राइवर डॉट फाइंड एलिमेंट फाइंड एलिमेंट इज अ फंक्शन फ्रॉम द वेब ड्राइवर इंटरफेस ओके विच विल फाइंड एन एलिमेंट बेस्ड ऑन सम कंडीशन द कंडीशन इज डिफाइंड बाय द बाय क्लास बाय क्लास हैज गॉट द मैकेनिज्म यूज टू लोकेट एलिमेंट विद इन अ डॉक्यूमेंट डॉक्यूमेंट मीन्स द वेब पेज जस्ट अ मिनट या दिस बाय क्लास will have just a minute will have functions like these by id link text name partial link text all of them are visible over here okay there are various locator strategies like by id by link text by name by partial link text tag name xpath we will look at all of them css selector ओके, राइट सो देर आर दीज दीज आर द वेरियस लोकेटर स्ट्रैटेजीज एंड ऑल ऑफ देम आर स्टैटिक इन नेचर यू कैन एक्सेस देम जस्ट बाय राइटिंग बाय डॉट सो इन द बाय क्लास ऑल दीज स्टैटिक थिंग्स विल कम टू यू राइट इफ आई एम ऑन द जीमेल पेज ओके इफ आई ऑब्जर्व दिस टेक्स्ट फील्ड on the gmail page this is an input box or i told you right all the text fields have that input tag and it's got the id as email now we are very lucky in this case that we are getting the id of the input field now id is supposed to be unique okay so i can write over here driver dot find element by the id email so this will find this text field on the page and find element function will return you web element okay reference of web element so web element i can write email equals to driver dot find element by the id email okay and then you can write email dot now inside the web element interface there are various functions okay if i look at the java docs fine and in the java docs if i look at the web element interface see that clear click get location get size get tag name get text okay is displayed is enabled all of these are the functions which you can fire on any web element to type into a web web element the function is send keys okay if i write over here email dot send keys hello this will go and type hello inside the email field so the crux is whenever you write driver dot find element it will go and find the element by the given criteria okay this criteria is known as the locator strategy okay and it returns you the web element back and on the web element you can fire the function fine so if i run this code hold on hold on the browser should open yeah see the browser opens it goes to gmail and it will type the name right okay now comes a question that i have written driver dot find element by the id email okay 
by the id email look there can be all right there can be multiple elements on the page with the id email there should not be but the developer can make a mistake id is supposed to be unique but what if by a mistake developer gives two elements on the page with the same id say one element is out here on the web page the other one might be out here then when you write by the id what will happen okay look selenium when it scans the page to find an element it scans from the top right to the bottom uh, to, sorry top left to the bottom right it scans it like this it keeps on going down from left to right so find element what it will do is that as soon as it finds the first element on the web page it will use it this one will not be used if you want to use the second one or the third one we'll we'll talk about it later on how you can use them but find element okay the definition of this function also gives that find the first web element using the given method the first one okay the extraction starts from the top left to the bot to the right side and get moves down okay right so this is what find element does right now moving ahead moving ahead uh look if i had if if i was running this program just a minute i'll run this again just to verify because i'm forgetting whether it was working yeah it's working fine it uh, typed hello now if i execute the same piece of code on chrome as well okay the way we discussed that day that we can write the code like this hold on let me put the properties as well yeah I'll, I'll put the browser name as chrome so depending on the variable browser that particular browser will be opened it will be taken to gmail and the e in the email field hello will be entered so the page source as i told you remains the same so even if the browser is chrome now the driver will point towards chrome driver e uh, uh, chrome driver it doesn't matter the page source remains the same if i run this code you will see that a chrome will open up and see that it goes to gmail and it types in hello because the page source remains the same okay if it's email in firefox it's email in chrome and it will be email in i as well if i run it on i okay <laughs> gmail is opening in a different way in i it's typing hello but it's it's opening a different way but generally the websites they don't okay generally the websites they open the same way in all the browsers right now moving ahead i have talked about the id you i you identify the id email right now if you look at the next this is a button fine if i want to click on the button you know this button has also got an id which is really great okay so we are saved fine or it's got a name as well name is sign in okay name is also supposed to be unique fine I I had told you right ID name and class these three are good things fine so if i write over here web element button equals to 
driver dot find element by the sorry by the name there is a name locator strategy as well by the name so the name of this button is next okay it is case sensitive is if n is capital over here you will have to give capital n over here right and what do you want to do on the button click on it dot click it's very simple okay this will go and click on the button i'll just give my id right and if you look at it if i run this mm -hmm. just a minute i'll put mozilla hold on sorry the name is not next the name is sign in okay value attribute is next the name is sign in for this button okay right so now if you run this it will run fine there was some error coming up earlier because i had given a mistake are you guys able to understand what i am doing right now you see that okay right now instead of writing okay instead of writing two lines each time you can also write everything in one line there is no need to waste time by first finding the element and then performing the action on it okay in the first line over here i am finding the element in the second line i am performing the action i can do it in one go as well you write over here like this driver dot find element by the id email this would be the web element okay and on that web element fire the function send keys so the execution starts from the left side first the element is found and then send keys is fired on that element okay then driver dot find element by the name sign in and on that click so this will first find the element with the name sign in okay and then click on the element so instead of writing two lines again and again you can add, write everything in one go many of you must be knowing this All right okay now comes the question that fine this is fine if you have id if you have name everything looks good right but what if an element has got no id or name for example a text like this one account all of google this text is present inside the h1 tag this h1 tag has got no id no name nothing so how do you recognize this so out here we have the concept of x path coming o into the picture x path or css selectors do you guys know about x paths what they are do, do, do you guys know about x paths okay right look x path you can say it's like the address of the element okay it can uh, you know it, it can donate the, it, it can denote the element like for example every one of you is staying in some address okay you have an address where you can be tracked down okay so similarly x path is like the address of the element on the web page okay 
right for example um, how to explain you just a minute like x paths okay x paths are like address and they can be used to easily identify the elements no matter whether the element has got id name whatever it is okay there are two types of x paths one is a complete x path and other one is known as absolute or partial x path okay complete x path right start from the root of the document for example for example if you um, take up this one account all of google text right this is an h1 tag right so i will trace down this h1 tag from the topmost tag with the, which is html fine so the first tag out here is the html tag fine inside the html tag there are two tags head and body both are parallel to each other i am interested in the body tag because the h1 tag is inside the body tag so i'll write over here body inside the body tag i want to go inside this division div tag okay because h1 is somewhere inside the div tag so i'll write div now inside this div there are three parallel division tags i hope you are understanding this is a division inside it there are three parallel divisions all right i want to go inside the i guess the second division something yeah i want to go inside the second division because h1 tag is present inside the second division okay so you will write like this slash div2 okay this means that inside this division go in the div2 if i don't write 2 out here by default it will take 1 okay so it will go inside the first division if you specifically write 2 in the brackets like this it will go inside the second division then inside the second division you have got two more divisions you want to go inside the first division because the h1 tag is inside the first so you can simply write like this slash div slash h1 because by default it takes one or i can also write one like this it doesn't matter so this is the complete x path okay you can use this to identify the element i, I can use this x path in my code i can write over here driver dot find element by the x path give this complete x path so this will find that text web element representing the text okay on that web element fire the function get text so you will get the text and you can print it as well get text function when fired on the web element driver dot find element by xpath this will represent the web element when i fire get text on it you will get the text of the element so when you run this anybody having any questions please feel free to ask okay it's showing some error hold on hold on hold on oh i need to put it bef after going to gmail.com 
right what is the use of x path and when should we use it this is the question being asked look every time you cannot just have id or name for an element okay every time you just can't have the id or name every element on the page will not have it so how do you identify it you need to use the x path strategies to identify it that's why we use it okay right so i go to the gmail.com and now if i run this you see that right it's working and out here also it's printing the text now it's not necessary that you build the x path the way i have built it right i built it manually no you know you don't need to build it manually right in fire firefox you can install a tool known as fire path okay fire path is an add on on the top of firebug all right so you can type over here firebug fire path please make sure you open it in mozilla okay right and you click on the link over here the first link make sure firebug is already installed in your firefox okay go to this link and click on add to firefox fire path will be added to firefox firefox will be restarted and you will see a small icon coming up over here for fire path okay you can generate the absolute x path right click on it and select the option generate absolute x path okay right and now when you move the mouse over any element in the fire path option you will see the complete or the absolute x path coming up make sure you have this option checked okay right so you don't need to calculate it yourself it will come up from fire path as well but absolute x path should not be used the reason being that if anything is added in between say if tomorrow any element gets added in between of this x path then absolute x path will get changed rather many x paths of the application will get changed so we refrain us ourselves from using absolute x path or uh, sorry this is the absolute or complete I, i'm sorry the first type of x path is known as absolute or complete x path we refrain ourselves from using this complete x path or absolute x path because if anything changes then everything goes for a toss firstly secondly right uh, secondly the thing is you know the nature of this x path is very odd it's so long and you know it doesn't look so good right partial x path is a better option but when partial x path does not work we end up relying on complete or absolute x paths okay so in tomorrow's class i'll be talking about partial x paths now how you can make them from fire path and all okay right